Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Bology. Manage and measure your player's skill development and increase accountability year-round utilizing the Bology app. Boost inter-squad competition with drills backed by the National High School Basketball Coaches Association, including a 40-shot Bology skills assessment. Please visit Bology.com slash teams for information on how you can provide this resource for your team. So on that note, you have a pretty cool activity, though, that you do, and, and it's fun to get to learn more about it because I've I've been a part of it. Uh, a way that you connect current players with some former ones. So go into that process of, I mean, the the call that I got, it happened to be from your son, which was really cool. But talk about that process that you have of keeping the new players connected to some of the older ones. Yeah, we you know, you try to build that team bonding, that chemistry, that culture, the togetherness, the all those things you try to build and. I'm not actually sure how we came up with it or, or why, but I, I wanted them to connect with the players that are up on that wall, the, the guys that are have been here and done it the right way. And and so uh, we just divide. We took some guys, I former players, and I called them or contacted them before and said, "Hey, I've got you know a group of young men. They're tired of hearing from me. They need to hear you know how we do things at the colony and some tradition. I want them to hear it from you." And so uh, we just kind of divided up about 12, 15 guys and let them reach out. And, of course, kids, they're like, Coach, that's going to be weird. I'm calling another guy I don't know. <laughs> like, they all they, – you trust me, once you make the call, it's going to – where you're going to be connected to them. And that's that's what I feel blessed about with us, that I have guys that are, you know, very – take a lot of pride in our program, you know, that played here, that they're going to take time to talk to a, a younger player and and like I said, we need to do more of those things, you know, and having the reunions that we had and having our tournament, you know, with Tommy Thomas, you know, Cougar Classic guys come back, but I need to do a, a better job and need to do more of it. So, but that's, that's a lot of fun. I think it's good for the, the former players as well, too. No doubt. And that's, that's what I was going to say is it was such a fun thing for me to get that call. And, and, you know, again, it was your son and he was very organized with the questions that he was going to ask. Let me ask you this, because the whole part of this podcast is not just what you do, but how you do what you do. Are there questions that you kind of have like, Hey, these would be really good to ask these former players, or do you pretty much just leave it up to them? I knew if I left it up to to most of them, it would be many. When'd uh, you graduate? Uh, how many points? All right, how many points? Yeah, can yeah. you dunk? Yeah, can you yeah. dunk? <laughs> so we did have a list of questions, and what is funny, it came up the other day. I, I found it on my you know computer just that we need to do those things, and uh, so I, I kind of led them in that. And then if I gave the uh, alumni a little chance, if they wanted to add you know anything extra in there, a funny story or a great memory and, and then they could, they could add that to it. But, um, you know, that, that was, that, that was, like I said, I take, I like that, um, that we've done it and I, I want our guys to do it again. So more. You know. Yeah. I think so many coaches, uh, and you kind of mentioned at the beginning of our talk, just kind of being busy this time of year. So seasons ended, we're about two months after that, but like it, it doesn't stop. And I think that's sometimes what it, not just coaches, but teachers in general, parents don't really understand the, the amount of time that goes into this. And it's pretty much year round. Like we really, even, even when we're on vacations, our mind is still going and we're planning and thinking things. But I think also this time of year for us, it's the time to listen to podcasts and to read new books and to go to clinics. And when you get to do that, you get, you get to borrow new things. So what's something that you've borrowed lately that has really impacted you? Um, you know, t two things that um kind of come to mind here that, that we've done is, you know, and one, I, you know, just you, you keep getting reminded of it, you know, is kind of keeping things simple. I mean, we've heard it thousands of times and but, you, you know, sometimes I think we when we're doing some drills or we're doing team building activities, we always think we have to come up with something new. And sometimes I've got to get back to things that we did back 
when I was an assistant with Coach Thomas, things when you were here, things, you know, other players, you get back to the things that you know and, 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 and just getting back to, like I said, some of the simple things. It doesn't have to be complicated. And that's something I just, like I said, I've just, that's been coming up more and more to me and less is more. You hear that all the time. And so, um, I've, I've, like I said, I've got to get back to some of those things. I've mentioned that several times. I've got to get back and like you're talking about this time of year, uh, if I turn this around and I've showed you my office, I mean, I'm trying to clean up my office, clean up files, get rid of things. <laughs> and when you've been at a place, um, I've, I've heard this from somebody, when you've been somewhere for a while, instead of just coming in the same way all the time, like, you know, clean up things, change things, treat, act like it's your first year on the job, you know, yeah. what would you do? and so trying to do a little bit more of that too. And it's good for me. It gets me excited and, you know, buy some new polos or whatever. I've had, you know, same t-shirt say, well, what? just buy some new stuff, get some new things and, and all that. And so, um, but something else I got here recently, um, and we got it actually last year, started doing it and, and continued doing it. And, uh, you know, you're always searching for those things during the, the season to connect with your players. And, you know, during the course of a game, I was yelling at kids, you know, block out, you know, or hustle back. And, and sometimes you're, yeah, you know, you're excited and you're yelling and then they take it the wrong way. And you're like, I'm, guys, I'm, I'm excited for you. Like, you <laughs> so, understand it comes from a good place. And I was list. I was watching something uh, somewhere and it was Ernie Johnson on TNT. And it was coming back when uh, it's talking about a story with his son and how, uh, you know, and I didn't know sign language, but is this right here? And it means I love you. And um, I didn't know that, but it was anyway, the story of it. And if you haven't heard it, 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 I can't do it justice. It'd be something to go research and, so it comes right up and it's just an awesome story and um, of, of what he does an awesome story and impact that his son had on so many people. So what I started doing is I even told our players, all right, I'm going to say, if I'm yelling at you to box out, I'm going to have this hand up, know that it comes from a good place. <laughs> and if I do this to you, you better do it back. You know, mm. and sometimes you get that kid, he's front, I said, you know, I do yeah. it. So we do that and they do it back and, and sometimes being goofy about it. But again, I mean, we're all around our players so much and each other so much that, I mean, we do, we love these guys and, and um, sometimes they don't recognize it, you know, after a while. So again, we'll break our huddle with it, you know, uh, have our hands up like that. And, you know, tr sometimes trying to calm a guy down is going to free throw line, big free throw, mate, just throw it up there, you know, and, and be done. And, you know, I shared it with our girls coach this year. Their players started doing it. And I'll see some of them in the hall. That's awesome. And we'll do that. And like I said, that's pretty simple, you know. And uh, so, no, that's something that we've used and kind of like. And, you know, like I said, we'll continue using it. So That's great. Yeah, going back to your first – the first thing about keeping it simple, but then also from year to year kind of treating things new, uh, That that's a great nugget. And Chris Hill over at – Jesuit said something very similar about treating every year as if it's brand new, because if you don't, you run the risk of assuming that this group of players you have now are identical or can do the exact same things. And, and there, the, I think so maybe you close yourself off to some adjustments that you need to make that might be really good. So while you do want to keep it simple, you do want to remember the things that you've done also remember to keep it new and fresh uh, that could be defensively or offensively. It could be the drills or like you said, the gear, just because it's worked in the past doesn't mean that it's the best thing for this new group that you have. I know I've been guilty of, Hey, I mean, our three, two pressure zone worked great last year. We're not going to work on man at all, but maybe that's not the best thing for this team. And just to keep that, that uh, reminder. Yeah. And I, for me, sometimes I've had to go through that and be like, okay, this this is not working with this group, you know, and sometimes it may be several games in or, you know, we're halfway through the season. That's not working. So let's let's not run zone anymore. Let's stick to man. And there's some teams maybe, hey, we can trap a little bit more, do some other things. And like you said, change, change and not being afraid to change and not being afraid to just like you said, because it did work before. doesn't mean it's going to work again. But then there's also that fine line there of – uh getting back to something that worked before, you, you know, a simple inbounds play or a, you know, a quick hitter, right? this, you know, 
and of course we had a lot of quick hitters, you know, that looked really good. And we had Dan and Bracy and those yeah, guys. That's not hard. <laughs> but you know, getting back to some of those things that uh, yeah that do work. And so, most of the time for me, it's not getting back to necessarily plays or X's and O's. It's just kind of getting back to you know the the things we did on the court, off the court, you know, to as a team and and things like that. So getting back to some of those things too. Yeah. And then I love the fact that one, the the story, the connection with Ernie Johnson and with that, I love you. I think that's a powerful phrase to tell players. Uh, and I think it, it's it's important for those young men to get to hear uh, an older coach or a young women too, an older coach saying that to them. And, you know, we can't just assume that they hear that all the time at home. And it might be a, a, a place where they actually do hear that more as in, in basketball with us. But I also think it's a great place to be in when you have so many uh, isms, you know, uh, sticky language or phrases that you say or things that you do that they start to maybe finish them, uh, mimic or mock in some way. But I, I don't really mind if they're trying to say or sound or do some things I do because I don't care what the motivation is. If you're saying it and doing it, it's working. So we wow. snap uh, in our uh, for part of our culture, snap to celebrate, snap to do all these things. So if I'm in a group, it's kind of like saying amen at church. If somebody, a preacher says something that you agree with, you'll hear amens just yelling out. It's that uh, agreeing with and, and supporting what's being said. So I'll be in a group and I'll say, man, you know, Johnny really was busting it today. And I'll start to snap and they'll just start snapping. Well, all of a sudden, I mean, it's been 10 years now snapping here. And it's become a greeting now. So when I walk around and, and to students that I don't even know, uh, not even in basketball, though, Coach Saman, and, and and I'll say, hey, how's it going? It's a snapping is now saying hello, basically. So it, it's fun when you do some of those things that there is occasionally that players will think that's corny. I don't care as long as they're doing it. And at some point, it it just, to, in my opinion, it becomes real. Yep. At some point it does. It sticks to them. And. And when those players get away from you and they're in the locker room and they might make fun of you a little bit, you know, hey, coach, you're doing, you know, or whatever, that's okay. And uh, at the end of the day, when they know uh, they can refer back to something we did to whatever it is and how we did it, you know, that you had some sort of a an impact with them and um, and that those something they, they may remember forever, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it's even something, I mean, it's even guys that I didn't coach that coach Thomas had coach, you know, they talk about things in the, in the locker room beforehand. And I've heard story and it's just things that stick with you. You just never know exactly what it's going to be. And uh, so what do we do as coaches? We keep finding those little things and we're not afraid to throw ourselves out there and look silly or get embarrassed or, you know, or any of those, we just keep throwing them out there and share. I think the one of the things too, and I tried it, I told the kids the other day, man, I, I want to share my heart with you. And when I come out, like, I want you to understand it. I don't need, you know, my name on a trophy or a playoff shirt, or I want you to experience it. And I want you, but it comes from such a good place, your heart. And again, you're going to be out of high school and you're going to be in college or after, and you just, I want you to know how much you mean to me still. I mean, this is my job. And, uh, but man, those kids are a part of your life and they become such a part of family and, when they when they get a little glimpse of that that okay coach cares about me that's when and that's when what we do is really really special yeah. i think a big key too is that when someone is when a coach is sincere and authentic like you are like those are those are two things that are uh, two ways that i would always describe you as never fake like you said not worried about promoting or your or anything about you it's all about the program and your players. But when it comes across that way, it, it doesn't really matter what you say or what you do. It's it's more believable. You have a better chance of really grabbing their attention when you're sincere and authentic and they can feel that from you. I agree. I agree. And I think when, and nowadays, again, we have so many challenges and, and uh, the, the things that we're you know, going against or whatever, but when then these kids can, can see that and feel that and, their parents or everybody like it that's when it's really really special and powerful you know i got a, a message just a couple of days ago from a former player graduated probably you know 
five, six, seven years ago. And, you know, his dad just wanted to check in, you know, and just, again, how things were so special and, you know, just appreciated things. And that that's when it's really fun, too, when you yeah. connect with the whole family and stuff. So, Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.